A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a, cl in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at, Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with all of you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe in him has already been condemned. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that Many of us, even included me, sometimes uh, has experienced the fact that I do not understand fully why we can think about God as one in three persons, because we have experience of persons, and therefore that sometimes confuses us about this doctrine or this teaching of the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity sometimes uh, passes through our mind and goes out, and sometimes we gloss over it and don't think deeply about it and its consequences for our lives. But it has been the center of Christian belief. The Trinity has been the center. This is our God. Our God is Trinitarian, but because we don't dig deep into that, we don't even experience it in our lives. And so there are a lot of people who say, ah, I, I can't relate with the Trinity. I can relate with Jesus Christ. <laughs> and people, many times we even say that, oh, yeah, I can relate with the Spirit. Oh, I can relate with God the Father, like an old man with white beard and, and, and sitting majestically. We can relate with these, but when we talk about the Trinity, we're like, huh, what does that mean concretely? What does that mean in our lives? And that's because the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity should not be uh, something that should be debated or, or to, to, to learn intellectually to be able to understand it. The Trinity is basically uh, uh, a belief, and a belief cannot come, we can't understand a belief until we start living it. A belief is something that is known, that we come to understand only by practice, only by living, 
and since we are not living that, there is no way of understanding it. This, this idea or this reality of God, our God, can be known only when we are behaving like God. Because our God is a reality that is always reaching out to us. Our God is not a God who sits in his or her Godness without any effect, without any reaching out. Our God is a reality that automatically reaches out. And once you say, I know God, you are already practicing or living like God. That is the way this God is. This is our God. Our God is a God who is, who is full of touching us, reaching us. Our God does not sit, does not hoard, does not enjoy the Godness and the love by itself or by himself or by herself. Our God is a God who overflows. Once you come to know God, you already are practicing it. And it's by practice that you come to know even deeper and deeper. So the God who, who created us, we experience that God when we are also creating, creating in our world. When we start living like that, creating, we, we come to know God. We see this God reaching out to us in like, like someone who bails us out, someone who, who takes us out of trouble when we are in trouble, who redeems us when we find ourselves, when we cannot help, help ourselves, this God comes to redeem us. And so when we also redeem other people, when we are working to to, to, to bail people out from their troubles. When we are doing that, we come to experience God as Jesus Christ who died and bailed us out of our sins. The same way uh, uh, we, 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 we feel that this God, uh, when we forget about what we are to do, that this God reminds us or when we don't have words to speak on our own behalf, this God comes to provide us with the vocabulary, with the idea, with the words, with the way to live our lives. It reminds us all the time about things that we know but have forgotten. And so when we also are doing the same thing, reaching out to other people and reminding them because people do forget. We are human beings who forget. But once we are doing this, we come to know this God. We come to know this God fully. So the Trinity is not an idea that can be known uh, intellectually. It is a way of life that has to be practiced, that has to be lived, lived concretely in our world. And that is something that that inspires us today as we celebrate the Feast of the Trinity, that we can take something out of this to address the issues that we are going on, that is going on in our world today. Both the pandemic, the two pandemics that we have right now. At the moment, yes, we are living two pandemics. We are living the pandemic in the pandemics of, of disease, of COVID-19 but we also live in the social and spiritual pandemic that's about racial and other forms of injustice, racial injustice that has been with us, has been with our community, not just America, but the world, that this has been there, which we have glossed over, we do not reflect on. This thing has showed its ugly head again, crying out to be treated, to be given attention to, to be addressed. We can tap into our understanding of the Trinity to address this issue in our world. Once again, we have a remedy from Christian faith. The Christian faith in a God who reaches out 
and so loved the world, as we just heard from the gospel reading, God so loved the world that God could not just sit in, God, in its godness, but just has to reach out to the world, has to give life to the world, has to promote human life. God loved the world so much so that God reaches out. God cannot not reach out. And for everyone who calls, uh, who calls himself or herself Christian or the follower of this God cannot, cannot be without that mission. We share in the Trinity's mission. The Trinity's mission is to reach out to humanity and to give life to humanity equally all over humanity in general. Humanity in its differences, in its diversity. And God reaches out to us that way so that we, those of us who call ourselves Christians, those of us who believe in a God who has a mission, who is on this Trinitarian mission, we share in that mission. So you and I have a mission. You and I have a mission for the world. And one of those missions is to give life. It's the God who creates and created us. So we can create others. We can help others recreate themselves. So racism or racial injustice has no place at all. Racial injustice is one of the things that we must use the faith, our belief in the Trinity to crush racism to eliminate racism from our hearts and our world. It is a spiritual sin, and we need to engage in it. And therefore, all of us are called upon. There's no one in this world that can say, ah, this does not concern me. This, this has no, I have no hand in this. No matter where you live in this country, this country has a history we have a history, our country have a, has a history that is embedded in racial discrimination, which is historical, which is a fact. And that has made its way subtly into many of our laws, into many of our behaviors, into many of our thinking. And sometimes our Christian faith has been subdued, has been crushed by this mentality about about the superiority of different races, some over some others. Our belief calls on us, brothers and sisters, to, to now engage. There is no room for silence. We are called upon to engage in this discussion, all of us, including members of the church, including people who are not, who can say, Oh, no, I don't practice racism. No, this is not the issue. The issue is that our humanity, our country has been infested by racism. And we Christians, to follow our God who reaches out, has to reach out. We have to talk about it. We have to engage. We have to have conversation with our children. We have to dig deep into the, the life experiences that other people who are our own fellow citizens are going through. We have to have a discussion. Just because it's not happening in your church or in your neighborhood does not mean that, that, that it is not with our community or our country. And so it's our responsibility. And I always want to point out the fact that uh, many of our young people uh, can be admired. Many of our young people today, they have moved on. Many of them have seen the, 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 the new way that God has called us to live as Christians. We see on our streets that it's not just black people and Hispanic people who were marching on the streets. No, they were full of White kids, blue kids, green kids, black kids, all of them are on the streets. They get it. They understand it. And it is God's way. 
It is the way that God is calling on us. And so anybody who graduates today, this is where I want to bring into, into light the fact that our children who are graduating today, I address you now, you are called upon to move our world forward in this understanding of God. Everything that you have been successful in, in learning are meant to help our country and our world and make your contribution to help us heal our physical diseases, but also to heal our social sins, to heal our social community. And that is why we celebrate you. As we celebrate you today, let that be the message for you as you go forward in your career, as you go forward in your studies. May God bless you, and because of that, we would like to note each and every one of you and your accomplishments today. We celebrate you, and may God bless you. May God give you that spirit of reaching out, that whatever you have learned and have been successful in learning, you may use it to reach out to the world.